This episode of The Clear Out was recorded on the 18th of April 2023 at home in Wicklow and it is the 100th episode of the podcast and so I am going to give you uh, an indulgent (laughs) who am I indulging you ask myself who else I can't indulge you um I'm going to give you an indulgent hour or hour and a bit, in fact, where I permit myself a bit of a stock take uh, of the podcast and a bit of a reaffirmation of the podcast manifesto. And I I lay out, as I occasionally do, I, I lay out the recurring themes of of the show or of the tell if you prefer. And I think it could be an interesting episode to to pair up with the first episode, which I recorded uh, 23 months ago. The title of that episode is What the Hell Are We Listening To? Um, So they could be a nice, a nice little pair to throw together. Uh, I also include in this episode at the very end two of my poems that haven't really seen the light of day before, certainly not on a uh, a social media platform. So um, that's uh, that's something I throw in there at the end. Um, as you know, I recently claimed that reading poetry uh, can be an anti-fascist statement. So uh, I'm leaning into that. And overall, this episode is a big lean in to what I believe the podcast is all about and what it's going to continue to be about. So uh, get comfortable with whatever you're doing and um, come along on the journey with me. Enjoy the ride. (laughs) As, um, (laughs) As the actress said to the bishop. Okay, Uh, I'll see you around the corner. Cheers. Change my mind, leaving the dream behind. Keep my emoji inside. Hi, my name is Dara Clear, and you're listening to the 100th episode of The Clear Out. Brace yourselves, <laughs> prepare to be underwhelmed. I sit down late on a Tuesday night because my normal schedule has been disrupted and I didn't feel like recording it at night tomorrow night the day before it's released um, because that would have felt like too much pressure so here I sit a mug of tea just finished ready to embark on the 100th voyage of the SS clear out and I set sail without a map and with no clue where it is I wish to arrive (laughs) at the end of this perilous, precarious expedition. And you, you poor unfortunate, (laughs) you're going to be my my sailing companion. So, um, yeah, I hope you brought, I hope you brought provisions. I hope you brought a map. Maybe you can help me steer this thing away from the rocks so we don't founder on wild waters. Yep, 100 100 of these these bad boys. Um, it It feels good. It feels good to have reached this particular milestone. Um, nothing before this has felt like an achievement but getting to a hundred episodes for some reason I'm feeling I'm feeling quite proud of myself it's quite a good effort isn't it to have been banging this out for 100 weeks in a row without fail I think there was I think there was one delay because of a power cut and there was another delayed episode because of a 
a little technicality um, on the Acast formatting, um, which prevented me releasing um, the episode on time. But apart from that, that's 98 episodes that have gone out bang, 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 right on time. Uh, I say that. I'd, I'd need to go back and, and check. But I think I've done it every Thursday for the last 100 Thursdays, uh, apart from those two exceptions I mentioned. And as a friend of mine, Shane, how are you, Shane? I know you might be listening um, in San Francisco. It, it doesn't work that way, does it? Because that's, that's, it. that's like it's live, but it's not. Because if Shane's listening, he's listening. Shane, if you're listening, you're listening. Um as Shane said to me face to face uh, when he visited last, um, when he was here at Christmas and he was also here last summer, he said, um, I can't believe you keep thinking of uh, <laughs> things to say, things to talk about, the subject matter. Um, I take that as a, a great compliment, especially considering I rarely I rarely have anything planned. I almost never have anything written down. Um, but I I am very aware that there is much repetition thematically across the across the episodes. Um invariably returning to themes of resilience, of um of agency of objectivity versus subjectivity um of positivity of taking responsibility for oneself of owning one's own stuff uh themes very many themes connected to a core a core idea of identity often coming back to this idea of identity and a lot of a lot of my existential frame uh, of reference centers around the negotiation of self and trying to unpack and make sense of and accommodate and accept and challenge notions of self as a pathway to greater capability as a pathway to more attainable, workable, authentic happiness. Um, and yes, uh, resilience, as I said earlier. So those themes come up again and again and again and again. Um, and you, know, you only have to look through the, the back catalogue look through the archives wherever you're listening to this and you'll see certain ideas coming up um, repeatedly or variations of the things I just referred to coming up and the vehicle typically is movies uh, the vehicle typically is personal testimony personal storytelling the vehicle may be related to social issues political movements philosophy psychology um i should prefix philosophy and psychology with armchair um although i have some grounding in philosophy but uh yeah that's it and everything ultimately everything is tethered to an idea of of wellness of wellness that's a little bit edgy of wellness that's quite self-deprecating of wellness that's rooted in humility and vulnerability and wellness that's um very much a sort of response to a performed hyper positivity which i i reject and have rejected from the very start um, I'm much more interested in embracing the mess and embracing the flaws and the failings in in a way that isn't spun in a, in a way that isn't um, 
made into a cute anecdote of recovery or uh, a takeaway or a teachable moment. I I despise that crap. <laughs> I despise it. It's not living, it's commenting. It, you know, it, it's it, that like that 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 way of looking at your day to day existence by instantly trying to identify it and name it and present it it's it, it, that's all They're, that's stepping away from the now it's stepping away from being in it it's stepping away from true presence um and all of that in my opinion is more avoidance um and it, it's it's cute it's the kind of cute cutification if, if we can coin if i can coin that word not that i need your permission <laughs> or the cutesification cutes it's all cutesy um it's yeah i think i prefer that because cutesy is a more annoying word and conveys my irritation at the the, the concept but it is it's the it's the cutesification of of the the, you know, the the personal journey the personal wellness journey and i mean even you know wellness as much as i use that word i'm always a bit resistant to that as well um because of its overuse um it, it no longer it, or it, it may convey other things that i don't wish it to convey um but for the purposes of saying what's the podcast about it's probably the most workable idea um i mean i i know i i previously had written on my website uh when it was still up um that the the blog which was the birthing ground for this podcast that the blog was really dedicated to the idea of the examined life um, and that as a philosophical idea i think is very worthy very worthwhile um and is very rewarding um if you know again if, if if it's managed to be engaged with without over indulgence um if it's if it's able to be engaged with with a leveling perspective with an ability to not completely get lost in a swamp of naval fluff um i suppose fluff doesn't really work in a swamp does it what would it like what would be a more appropriate um a more appropriate metaphor for for for, for naval fluff it's funny i'm thinking of a scene from Peter Weir's brilliant, uh, was it 1985 movie Witness, um, with with Harrison Ford as the uh, the tough cop uh, who finds himself on the outside of a corrupt police uh, ring and ends up being taken in by the by an Amish community, which I presume must be. Is that somewhere in Pennsylvania then? Is that where the, the, the Amish are? The Amish? The Amish? Um, but there's a scene at the end of that where the bad cops have come to finish the job to kill him. And there's a, a very tense climax as Harrison Ford uh, tries to escape them. And one of the guys, one of his pursuers, ends up dying in a in a grain silo uh, as harrison ford leads him into this grain silo and then pulls a lever and tons of grain dusty grain descend on this guy and he's basically yeah smothered asphyxiated uh, in all this dusty grain and i remember finding that quite a, a chilling end i think i watched it first on video as a as a I, 
well, if it was 1985, I would have been 11, so maybe it was on video in 86. Uh, I would have been, I would have been 12. And I just thought, my God, Harrison Ford can do no wrong. Um, one of my favorite love scenes, actually, um, not, well, it, it kind of precedes the love scene. I, I haven't watched it for a while, because that lovely scene in the barn where he's trying to work on his car to get it going again, and Kelly McGillis, Kelly McGillis's character comes in, and she's like the daughter of the, you know, one of the elder families in the community, and isn't it Sam Cook's uh, "Wonderful World"? Isn't that what comes on on the radio? And Harrison Ford is going, "Oh, this is a great song," and sings it. <laughs> it's kind of grooving along to it. And she's just, you can just feel the kind of chemistry between them and she's intrigued and clearly attracted um, and, dare I say, aroused. <laughs> oh man, such a great scene. Love it. It makes me want to sit down and watch it now. Uh, it's a movie that has been, you know, landed on the, the curricula of English courses uh, around the world and of course as soon as a movie is being taught as a part of a course of education it loses its allure um, which is a terrible shame um, that's not the way to to come to these movies in, in my opinion unless you're a film student and that's different uh, it's quite a quite a beautiful and um, very well staged and shot movie um, yeah definitely definitely one of my favorites um anyway that was that came into my head because i was trying to think instead of a swamp of naval fluff a silo <laughs> a, a silo of naval fluff perhaps see a cloud of naval fluff you know we think of clouds um well i think of clouds and fluff i think oh that's a nice white what is it a cirrus i, I don't know my cloud terminology but um it doesn't feel negative and i feel this this fluff the naval fluff to be avoided in this pursuit of self-understanding self-knowledge um because we don't want to get lost in that where it's just excruciatingly self-absorbed i mean that's i don't think there's any uh, any real edification in that um whereas the understanding of oneself as a means of letting go of the things that torment us, uh, letting go of the things that burden us. I think that's a great, and um, as I said earlier, uh, a moment ago, a great and worthwhile pursuit. Um, because to, to understand ourselves, that's a very empowering thing to go, oh, that's why I do that or that's why I feel that way about that thing that's why that upsets me triggers me provokes me that's why I always struggle in that particular scenario and I trace it back to this um that's a very that's an incredibly useful thing to do um and I, I mean my my feeling is you know it, it'll never end and, and that's fine I'm, I'm i'm okay with that and that's not that's not to say <laughs> that's not to say i'm looking forward to that um i think though i think see, see i think the danger is we can think oh you know the work is done there's no more work to be done on you know on oneself and I think that's a very flawed line of thinking because we're never we're never the finished product are we i mean do you think we are and then i know there's another school of thought that would be yeah but you just gotta let it go at some point like forget just drop everything get on with everything else um my argument would be yeah, I mean, you know, everything else will be got on with anyway. But my conviction is that 
everything else will be got on with in a much more capable, potentially a much more gratifying manner if we're continuing to do the work on ourselves. And maybe as we get older and we, we simplify and clarify things in our life so we can be most at ease with ourselves maybe that's the maybe that's the ultimate arrival or the ultimate objective to achieve that where everything in our lives is in harmony with who we are i mean i don't i i don't know how realistic that is <laughs> because life has a way of bringing in enormous disharmony uh, um, without fail I mean this is why people join Buddhist temples isn't it <laughs> to just get away from everything this is why prisoners like to go back to prison not all prisoners but like you know re recidivism is not just the flawed criminal mind the criminal psyche um, hell bent on criminality criminal some criminals like the order of that life and being outside um, is is more challenging because they have to sort of fend for themselves and I mean again I'm not trying to be trite about that or to trivialize um, the you know the, the, the experience of being incarcerated I don't think that would be any fun at all um, and I'm sufficiently uh, wary of that experience that uh, I'll stay on the, the, the right side of the law and I know my my youngest brother who spent time in prison he he it's very clear to me that he does not want to end up in prison again um, although it's it's certainly arguable that he's not doing an awful lot to to stop that happening um, and that's as that's as much as I'll, I'll say on that for now um, yeah so yes I've completely completely lost my train of thought I'm not sure where I was going with that I know it was still all about the um, the the pursuit of that sort of serenity and harmony centered life where all all distractions i suppose are removed where you manage to get rid of all the white noise um yeah and i'm not sure how one does that if you're living a relatively recognizable, normal, in inverted commas, life. Um, because I think it's quite extreme, isn't it? To uh, maybe, maybe extreme isn't the right word, but it would take, um, yeah, it, it, it. I think it would take it, it takes a serious effort and incredible sort of um discipline and sort of restraint like social maybe social restraint I'm not sure because it's hard not to think that having too many people in your life is is part of it could be part of the problem as well so you know to, to go back to to return to a, a a metaphor that comes from the world of of karate that i referred to before um you're trying to reduce everything to its purest form and the the metaphor that was shared with me many years ago um, one of my instructors shared it with me it had been given to him by his instructor was the idea of the the sculptor and the the huge chunk 
uh, the huge boulder of rock that was being worked on by the sculptor and just chip, 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 chipping away until you reveal the pure art form within and the the idea the, the the analogy to karate was that's what you know in karate the repetition of the techniques the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of punches and kicks and blocks uh combinations that's all meant to be analogous to this idea of just chipping away chipping away chipping away until there's nothing left to chip away um in, and it's not that you've gone to nothing but you've reduced the the boulder to its purest form you've reduced the technique to its purest form the essence and that's where the real impact and effect the the efficacy will be um and i'm just wondering as i think about this idea of the almost like the the the, the purified life that almost becomes ascetic um, um and akin to yes the the monk like existence to remove oneself from society and to 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 declutter one's life so only the essentials remain it's I mean, it's part of me that finds that idea extraordinarily uh, appealing. <laughs> and to, to, an, to an extent, to an extent, I probably have imposed aspects of that purification, um, of that stripping away to my own life. Um, and I probably... I probably get most frustrated when I'm pulled away from those things that serve me best. Um, and so, for for example, last week on Friday, uh, now my daughter was, she's back at school this week, but she was uh, coming to the end for a two-week Easter break. And my wife was doing she was rehearsing some music show in the morning so i was home with my daughter and she had a pal over to hang out and oh, i don't know how long it ended up being three or four hours and in my mind prior <laughs> to the start of that day i thought oh i'll do this and i'll do that and i'll try and give it a writing done or oh it's a nice day maybe i can go for a swim or i'll do this and I just didn't and as I felt the day and that list of things I wanted to get done slipping away um, and a swim a swim was definitely in the mix I just could feel myself getting more and more irritable and you know more and more cranky and more and more ill at ease um, and yeah it just it, you know I, I just felt frustrated um, as all get out and the day wasn't it just wasn't a productive day for me on a on an individual level and in fact the last five or six weeks uh, much to my annoyance much to my my sense of personal failure much to my intense sort of frustration and self-recrimination the last six weeks haven't been productive um, I knew March was going to be quiet and I thought I was going to be you know, writing, finishing the writing of a few stories I've been working on for the, the wellness app, uh, the wellness, yeah, sleep and wellness app, Aura, Aura, can you feel my Aura? Um, and working on some other writing projects that I'm trying to sort of get, you know, get moving with um and i just didn't manage to do it um and there was you know some mitigating factors there i mean there's always mitigating factors when you're when you're a parent um and when there are other things that need 
to be prioritized on the kind of domestic front and i'm not resentful of those things at all and uh, you know I, I love being a parent I, mean, I spoke about that quite a bit la- on last week's uh episode um but i i am happiest when i'm being productive um, and working on the things that i want to be working on and when that doesn't happen um there's conflict there's conflict in me and i was thinking about this this friday that you know last friday and i was thinking instead of being sort of pissy with the day and not giving myself over to the day and to the morning particularly when uh, my daughter and her pal were hanging out um I should have just yeah I, I should have just gone with it I should have just let go of my personal agenda which is the me alone in the universe agenda um instead of creating this sense you know this this tension in myself like it's all of my own creation and it's it's delusional thinking and i wouldn't i don't call it magical thinking which is a different thing but delusional thinking where i'm telling myself a story and the story is in spite of my daughter being home most days um and in spite of various other things and various other as i said before domestic responsibilities that have to be attended to other things that have to be done uh, other places that have to be got to all the just day-to-day logistical living um instead of you know telling myself like this story that all that can happen and in the middle of all of that um and still trying to get up early and do my morning routine and still take the dog for a walk and still try and get a couple of swims in a week in the sea and um play a bit of football and teach a couple of karate classes all that sort of stuff and i'm telling and i'm telling myself in the middle of all that i'm still going to find time to write stories um record the podcast i mean that was the only thing i did really manage to do consistently was bang you know get keep the podcast going um but that is it's delusional because i'm not actually approaching my own stuff as if it's work and therefore i'm not prioritizing it in a no choice way um as one has to do when one is working um for an employer (laughs) rather than you know this kind of my my self-generated projects um i need to have a complete rethink and look at the days when i go this is this is the day and i actually need to put down a timetable and it's something i've never done before um because i've had sufficient discipline uh to do things but i don't know anyway sorry that's um i'm not sure where that that like that, that that's just my way of having a whinge about my like i said like my my failure to my failure to deliver um on my own expectation my failure to satisfy my own demands of myself over the last yeah six week period even though other things have been going on including bits of sickness and all that sort of thing anyway whatever so where does that get us to it gets us about halfway through this episode um one of the things i was thinking and this has this has been something that i've been i i spoke about explicitly uh maybe two or three episodes ago but getting to a hundred episodes of the show the tell because it's still not a show i'm still not haven't done any video episodes it's all for your ears um what i'm thinking more and more is 
I'm not changing and I'm not going to be changing that this is what it is and I'm not trying to hone it into something more acute it's organic it's really sloppy at times and I'm going to say that that's a strength <laughs> there's more delusion that's that's more delusion for you right there but I mean joking aside I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago this space let's call it a space this listening space that you come to is it's a vibe now that can be a very naff little phrase it's a vibe but that's what I'm offering you it's come here hang out spend some time and there's no pressure there's no pressure it's a place just to coast along on this little journey with me once a week um, and sometimes it's going to be a bit spikier than others sometimes it's going to be more focused than others but more and more I think you know what it is what it is and every episode well not not true but almost every episode is retrofitted and when I say that what I mean is I sit down, I press record. Sometimes I do know I have one or two ideas I want to knock around. Um, but there are times when I sit down and this episode, episode 100, is one of those times where I've sat down and gone, I just need to do this and I'm coming in and just going, relax, open your mind, open your mouth, <laughs> away you go. And I'm trusting that something coherent will come out. Um, and that's that's the game. That's the game I'm playing. And it's the game that you're taking part in as well. Not live, but you listen and your, your experience is, I don't know where this idiot is going to go. Um but he may have something interesting to say and he certainly seems to enjoy his own company very much and sometimes that's okay sometimes that's enough to be to be in the company of someone who is happy to be there um i mean this comes back to the idea of safe hands which i've spoken about before this comes back to the idea of tone which i've spoken about before the tone setter set the tone put people at ease come on the journey with me and everyone's going to be okay um and if that's the if that is the vibe and i believe it is if that's the vibe i'm selling um good good because I find a lot of wellness related stuff that I come across um, out there in in the uh, the world wide web land. A lot of stuff I come across is it's just a bit too forced and a bit too intense, and that doesn't make me feel well. It it, it actually has the opposite effect. It makes me feel ill at ease and my, you know, it, it raises my, my hackles. Um, I don't know what it does to my shackles, but it raises my hackles. And I just have a, an instinctive and instant distrust of what's been offered. Um, now I can set, I can step away from that and go, well, look, someone's trying to do something. Someone's trying to do something. It's not a bad thing. So more power to them. 
I hope it works out. And by the way, <laughs> you know, lest there be any confusion, many of those people are doing very, very well indeed. <laughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, and make make my efforts look um, pitiful by comparison. If we're talking about audience uh audience numbers if we're talking about you know listenership uh if we're talking about responses if we're talking about partnerships if we're talking about measurable success uh a lot of those a lot of those people i'm talking about are are kicking my ass but hey it's not a competition (laughs) it's not a competition okay i'm not here to compete I'm not even here to take part. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that, that raises the question, if I'm not here to compete and I'm not here to, to take part, what am I here to do? And I'm just here to be here. Is that, is that, a, is that a cop-out? Is that disingenuous? Um... But that is kind of the point. I'm just here to be here. And you're very welcome. You're very welcome to be here with me. Because that's the thing. And I don't need to sell you this moment. It's your moment. Like once you are here, it's not my moment anymore. It's Now it's your moment. And you bring your your being to bear on this moment and you can go holy shit this idiot is killing me and I'm aware that's the second time I've referred to myself as an idiot uh, don't be concerned uh, I'm I'm joking I don't actually think I'm an idiot N- not in any profoundly self-harming sense anyway all it means is I'm able to laugh at myself and it's not it's not one of those oh my god I'm so hilarious I can't believe how funny I am isn't this great am not I great that's a lovely Irishism there am not I for the non-Irish listeners Australians when I was living in Australia were always utterly bemused by am Amant I? Aren't I? I don't say aren't I? And many Irish people don't say aren't I? We like to say amant I? Sure, amant I great. <laughs> sure, isn't it grand? Um, yeah, I'm not laughing at myself in that, uh, you know, 70s, 70s lead guitarist, um, epic solo uh, I can't believe what my hands are doing as I stare at my fingers running up and down the fretboard way. Um, you know, <laughs> those those guitarists who are like, oh my God, is this really happening? I can't, hey, ah, wow, what am I doing with this? I'm, a, I'm not doing that. That's not the vibe at all. I'm laughing at myself in the moment and then it's gone. And then it might be a moment for for some real seriousness um okay anyway listen a couple of other things this is yeah just 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 let's just look at let's just look at some numbers for a moment let's just look at some numbers for a moment so the hundredth episode of the podcast that's fine okay we've covered that that's that's just all i've demonstrated is I can get myself to the computer. I can get myself to the microphone. I can get my ass in a chair and I can open up a recording program on my computer and I can talk. That's all I've demonstrated there. Okay. So I'm showing consistency, consistency of of those things I just mentioned. It's not necessarily consistency of quality and 
I don't like to comment on the quality of what I do here. That's that's up to you. That's up to you, the listener. And I'm very, very lucky. Even though, even though, and I'm not, I don't, I don't want to labour this point, but let's be fair, even though I don't have a huge audience, uh, to put it mildly, I do have some, some regular listeners. Um, and those listeners are, are mostly from my, from my, 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 my friendship, <laughs> my friendship circle, my circle of friends. Uh, and it's a nice international crew and they've been very, very supportive and let me know how they feel about what I'm doing. And it's great. That's very sustaining to me and very motivating to me. Um, and, I, and I hope that uh, I'll continue to attract other listeners that are people I don't know. Uh, like like the lovely Kay, who I referred to a couple of weeks ago, who's jumped on board and become a patron and has been reaching out to me with some great little communications and add-ons and responses to, to some of the stuff I'm covering in the episodes. So thanks, Kay, if you're listening. Um, but but yeah, Grant, that's it. That's the podcast. It's 10 years since all of this began, really. It's 10 years since this began with the, with the blog, also called The Clear Out. The new website will be up. Um, I'd say it's going to be up in the next two months, um, maybe even sooner than that. Um, I've fallen behind again on what I'm meant to be doing there. But it all started 10 years ago with these blog pieces, about these posts I was writing about emotional and psychological well-being. And that really was the beginning of this journey. So 10 years, okay? Probably about a hundred little think piece posts on the website. They'll be back up once the website is up and running again with just a new, shinier, happier version of what was there before. Um, and everything will be there. A bit of a one stop shop for the podcast and a bit of poetry, the short stories, the the blog posts, um, and some other things, I hope. Um, what else? What other numbers do I want to, to bump around? So 10 years ago, that means my daughter will be turning 10 this year as well. So that's, she's about six months away from that, but that's, that's not an insignificant thing either. Um, next week, next week, next week, <laughs> next week. How do you feel? I feel week next week. My wife and I will be celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary. So that feels like, I'll talk more about that next week maybe. Um, I may even be recording on the day of the anniversary itself. That's a pretty mad one. 20 years, just like that. Bang. Um... I have I have lots of thoughts about that. I don't know if I want to go. I don't I don't know if I want to go into all of that now. I might, might get a bit mushy. Might not. It might not. Um, but twenty years feels that feels pretty good. Um, yeah, lots of round numbers coming up. Obviously, in another what is it now? April. What's April the fourth month? Okay, so in another eight months, I'll be turning fifty. So that's another round figure. Now I know that's going to be, you know, that's that's the that's the first week of twenty twenty four, um, but I don't know. There's something. I don't know. There's a there's a sort of a synchronicity about these these round numbers: the ten, the hundred, the other ten, um, the fifty. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the 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 quantified approach to life it can it, it can give one a sense of of what of <laughs> of progress of aging of accumulation um 
do you measure your life in in numbers you know i do if you've paid any attention i record <laughs> i record all um all my kind of exercise all my physical exertions i record they're all jotted down and recorded um karate classes and and swims and and football and previously cycling uh you know tai chi self-defense physical work i'll i'll record that because that's using my body um it's all recorded it all goes down in the diary and it's just it's just amusing to me but it's also a way of kind of showing myself okay and this is because because i put such a high premium on physical exercise of I'm, I'm trying to physically stay well as part of my kind of mental wellness regime when i can kind of look and go oh yeah i did that many swims i did that many runs not that i run anymore swimming kind of took over swimming replaced running i played that much football i did you know that many karate classes i did that many um of my own workout in the morning i've done that many walks with the dog i look at those things and i go none of that none of that was wasted time all of that was time well spent and i use those figures as as an offset for other areas of my life where i feel i'm underperforming underachieving other areas of my life where i feel i'm failing where there you know those areas of my life which are the the sort of the flashpoints for for conflict the flashpoints for self doubt um areas of of crisis in you know in 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 whatever area of my life that those things are, are are happening and the you know recording the numbers of these other things that i do they 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 kind of help me balance the books a little bit so if i go oh the last two years they haven't been so great um professionally i haven't been been in, in in any sort of regular kind of conventional work i've been doing kind of bits and pieces um a little bit of this a little bit of that you know teaching some martial arts doing a bit of youth work doing some other things um and that hasn't always been that satisfying uh but i can go oh but i i did i did manage to produce 100 episodes of this podcast and that's not wasted time that's time very well spent and that exercise um and that engagement and that commitment that 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 pushes a button in me a good button that's um you know that's a very motivating thing for me uh because i'm demonstrating to myself oh i can do that um and also i get something from doing it i get something from rolling through again and again and doing you know okay keep flexing that muscle you know keep exercising that and let's see where it goes um and doing you know when i do karate when i swim all of that it's the same thing do it and enjoy it and enjoy it while you're doing it and then see where that energy takes you next see what it leads to next what positive thing it can lead to next um and that's yeah that's kind of that's the gig and i suppose if you reduce that to to a philosophy it's don't stop doing the good things while you're waiting for other things to happen don't don't put down those good things don't set them aside just because there are other areas of your life that need to be worked on because that good stuff will continue feeding you that good stuff will continue 
continue fueling the fire um and ultimately and this is my belief that ultimately you bring the benefits of that to whatever the the other stuff is whatever whatever those empty spaces are you're going to bring that good stuff into those spaces and eventually there'll be there'll be some sort of ignition there'll be some sort of takeoff there'll be some sort of opportunity uh and some sort of click that can happen um i mean you know that's like that 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 is a form of that is a form of faith and maybe that is the extent of my magical thinking um and like i said i mean if it, if it wasn't clear from what i said earlier i'm pretty down on myself at the moment i'm feeling pretty frustrated with myself because i feel i've had an opportunity over the last month and a half and i i haven't i haven't made the most of that time um yeah anyway whatever it is what it is i mean that's the other thing i you have to let it go there's no point in me dwelling on that i just go okay well tomorrow's another day and the day after that's another day and see if you can do better i mean that's 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 the that's the great beckett line fail better isn't it isn't that from am i am i misquoting <laughs> fail again fail better isn't that the beckett quote oh dear i'm showing showing my ignorance as ever this is this is a great uh ongoing exercise in the revelation of the depths of my ignorance and the uh my indulgence in my own dilettantism okay so there were some uh, I'm not. I'm not going to go there because it, it it just feels it's it's the wrong note. There were some things in the news I was going to talk about, um, but I'm not going to. I'm just not. I'm I'm not even going to mention them because it's it, it'll push us in the wrong direction. And this this episode really has been um, just a very sort of elongated version of yet another iteration of um kind of the, the the mission statement uh for the for the podcast but just just in case you think you've wasted 55 minutes of your life i'm going to finish today's episode with um <laughs> I just, just just as you started to get excited um i'm going to finish today's episode with uh, a couple of poems um and a couple of my own poems I, w- I was very inspired the other week uh i read a few poems because i did an episode where i was arguing that just to read a poem is a is a is a sort of an anti-fascist statement um just to indulge in just pure aesthetic pleasure um now dare i use that phrase i'll repeat it pure aesthetic pleasure (laughs) dare i use that phrase alongside here are two of my poems yes i dare and oh god i was nearly going to indulge really egregiously and read three of my poems but no i'm going to read two poems that um i i i I never i didn't you know i've put up poems on my on my blog the you know the original website the clear out and they will be up there again soon enough um i've also i also for a while early in the in, in 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 the podcast i used to just quickly bang out a a pod what i was calling a pod poem so I, I'd, I'd find myself inspired by something in the, that, that would come up in the podcast, uh, in a podcast episode, and then I'd bang out a quick poem that I'd throw up on um, Instagram. So if you go back on my, my Instagram page, uh, which is the, the, the clear out, at the clear out, um, you'll find um, pod poems that I've put up there. But... I'm going to share two poems with you that um, that are not that. 
and I'm just checking my Instagram there. It's the clear out at the clear out podcast, not just at the clear out. Uh, anyway, so I spoke earlier about the idea of disharmony. And uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine was going through a tough time. He'd have he'd had a, he was in the middle. Uh, yeah, in, in you know in the middle or like just on the other side of a, a big breakup um, with his his partner. And um, I had a big chat with him one night, um, and yeah, we kind of really got into it, and it was it was intense, and he needed he needed someone to talk to, and I was happy to to be that person in that moment for him. Um, but after I, I'd finished speaking to him, there, there was there was one thing that had come up in our conversation. Uh, and he was there like nursing this absolutely battered heart and just all over the place and you know having a very raw vulnerable moment in his life and trusting me to kind of be someone who we could just kind of share that and be open with and you know that's all grand and that's you know that's what you do for your friends and as, as I say I was very happy to be there for him but <laughs> he was in this moment of you know emotional you know you know know, torment um he was giving out about his housemate and this i don't know why i'm I'm not talking i don't know why i i I don't know why i'm I'm trying i'm sort of trying to protect the anonymity of this friend now he knows who he is and um you my friend if you're listening you'll know who you are um but he was he was giving out about his flatmate and he kept referring to him as, you know, he said, oh, this guy, like, he, 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 you know, he's even shorter than me because this friend I'm talking about, he's not a tall guy. And he was giving out with this guy he was living with who was even shorter than him. Um, but his his flatmate, he just wasn't, he seemed to represent the sort of, the opposite of where my friend was at. My friend was just wallowing in absolute sincere um you know heart yearning and living through his heart and the, his, you know the, the the purest um most kind of sincere emotions connected to to love and commitment and you know trying to you know trying to find a path with your soulmate and that not working out and all of that stuff um you know just the the, the raw messiness of any intense breakup but i was struck by this idea of the 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 kind of the oppositional nature of where he was at and where his flatmate was at and so i wrote him this poem and i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna read it for you now um it's called discord hey shorter than me guy i'm a heart I'm not a dick. I'm a heart. I'm not a dick. Can't you see shorter than me, guy? It's not just thrust and pump. My love muscle is in my chest. Yours is in your pants. That's not the dance I want right now. But how would you know? You haven't got it yet. Yeah, you're getting it, but you haven't got it. This isn't Lego, man. It's not looking for what you can fit where. It's not just going down there. It's not you're looking fine or what's yours is mine. It's hearts and minds, bro. It's hers and mine, shorter than me, guy. You're hurting us both. I can't stand what I see, not in you nor in me. But at least I'm trying. I'm trying, shorter than me, guy. I'm trying. I'm walking my line. You're not ready. I can see that. Too much fun to pop this and pop that. Too much fun to flex and to pose. Too much fun with that scent in your nose. You've got moves shorter than me, guy. But sometimes life wants you to stand still. Just be still. Get a hold of yourself, man. Respect yourself. Know yourself. Shorter than me, guy. 
Don't blow yourself. Okay, that's that one. <laughs> Discord. Yeah, shorter than me, guy. I thought that's great. <laughs> I'm not saying I thought the poem was great. I just liked shorter than me, guy. Okay. Now, in um, in a very different area, and in a way I'm reading this in anticipation of my anniversary next week, our anniversary. This is a poem I wrote for my wife on her 40th birthday. Um, so this is going back a little while. <laughs> and I, 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 yeah, I was just thinking about it because it was a, um, you know, again, it's it's it's. It, I I don't think it's a. It's probably a poem I would write differently now, um. You know, I I I don't mean, my sentiments are different now, um. Or I wouldn't have nice things to say, but I mean, I I think I'd write it differently as a, you know, my my poetic voice has changed, um. Since you know when I wrote this over ten years ago, um, but it was kind of my attempt to pay tribute to my wife at that time and I was yeah yeah I was just trying to kind of um convey something of a sort of a of a destiny that I, I believed <laughs> that I chose to believe was at work in bringing us together um and my wife is a musician she's a singer and that was very kind of central to who she was and you know very much a part of uh you know of, of you know of, of some of the many things that I, I found attractive about her and beautiful about her so when i was coming up with a, a name for this poem i came across uh one of the kind of greek muses was a a a goddess called terpsichore terpsichore uh now at the you know, when I wrote it, I didn't realize it was pronounced that way. So I was pronouncing it Terpsichore because Terpsichore, mispronunciation, actual pronunciation, Terpsichore was the goddess of dance and choral singing. And there was something in the kind of the pure musicality of that that I thought that's a great, that's a great name for this poem because that's kind of how I feel about my wife. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to read this poem. And as I say, it's kind of because I'm thinking about our anniversary next week. Um, and I may have more to say on that next week, as uh, as I said earlier. But this is Terpsichore, which was written for Chiara on her 40th birthday. When we were young, the world was a much bigger place. And you and I unknowingly stood face to face on each end of the earth's axis not wanting to emulate the great circumnavigators of time and history but most content just to get halfway your compass was immersed in amongst and through heart searing soul and feline fixation i was Zoot suiting wildly in a Wicklow warren, conducting my own narcissistic nation. You supposed Ireland could be the spot to locate a red-haired man of Arran. I fancied that Antipodean continent might just be large, wild and colourful enough to contain my incontinent rampaging largesse. Two bright-eyed, smiling wonders, almost overwhelmed by life's realizations and revelations, its cold truths and blunders. Who would guess that over two decades would then separate the wistful longings of childhood from the haphazard masochism of the fully-fledged graduate child? Meek and mild, or bold as brass, 
or an unlikely mix of both? Who were we when time dropped you in Dublin's lap, in time to see a head of long, red, curly locks hit the deck with nary a dam or a feck? You went away before you came back, Time enough for a little acorn to grow into an oak sapling leaning towards the sun in spite of the grounding Irish soil. God knows what brought you to these woods. We sang and I thought, but my God, what a face and what a voice. And I hardly had a choice but to make myself known. And so I brought you home. I fell in love with you when you made no apologies for loving me. You scooped me up to dance on my mother's kitchen floor and I was utterly bewitched, brazen and beautiful and joyous and electric. I could have wept if you hadn't been keeping me on my toes and in front of my people no decorum observed, no forelock tugged, no mealy-mouthed supplication. You brought love to life and knocked me off my feet and had the great courtesy to stop my fall. How could I not be in thrall? You are the light and the music and the dance of my every breath. Hmm. I quite like that. <laughs> there are some nice things in that. There are some nice things in that. There's a, yeah. It's nice to revisit that. Okay, there you go. There you go. That's me indulging myself. And thank you for indulging me. Because that's where I'm going to leave it this week. That was episode 100. And you've been very kind to to listen and if you've been a repeat listener a regular listener my goodness thank you thank you so much thank you for going on this this unending journey with me and believe me there's no end in sight um yeah okay so look as always um i'm out there i'm out there on social media feel free to throw me some love throw me a bone Throw me a comment and um, yeah, if you um, if you like what you hear, uh, let people know. Spread the word. Let's get this baby out there uh, to reach more ears. And of course, if you're so motivated, you can. You can support this show on a regular basis using the Patreon link. Uh, that's patreon.com forward slash the clear out. And you can just throw me a price of a cup of coffee uh once or twice a month um once a month actually is how it goes out but um again it's you know if you can afford it if you're enjoying what you're hearing very very welcome and if you can't don't worry about it it's all good there's also a supporter link there uh, one of the, an acast supporter link if you want to make a one-off donation but um otherwise yeah just uh keep listening rate the show subscribe comment whatever um and yeah thank you thank you for any support you've given me so far thanks for listening and uh i'll be back next week with with more of the same so uh i hope that sounds good to you um because i'll be doing it regardless <laughs> okay take care thanks for listening mind yourselves all the best bye